This EVMS training snippet, sponsored by the United States Department of Energy's Office of Project Management, discusses the nature of the baseline freeze period and guidance for executing baseline changes during this time period. The Performance Measurement Baseline, or PMB, represents the time phase plan against which performance is measured. For this measurement to provide meaningful information which can be used for decision making, it must directly tie to the authorized scope of work and represent the current execution plan for the project. Having a disciplined change control process helps to ensure that these goals are met. To achieve this, the Control Account Manager, or CAM, has the option to request approval from the Project Manager to change the scope, schedule, and or budgets for their control accounts to improve integrity and accuracy. However, when considering changes to the near-term baseline, defined as the current period, or month, and the next period, there is additional guidance needed in order to ensure a disciplined approach. The definition of freeze period is a restrictive period for baseline changes. The intent of the freeze period is to limit or control the baseline changes made in reaction to project performance and to motivate a more forward-focused change control system. Baseline changes are highly restricted during the freeze period to maintain a stable and measurable work plan for ongoing work. In other words, the freeze period limits the ability to adjust the budget time phasing based on actual performance in order to mask variances. Per DOE guidance, this freeze period is, at a minimum, the current accounting period plus the next accounting period. Frequent, continuing, or unallowable adjustments to the baseline within the freeze period are suggestive of a poor plan and will result in the lack of insight into the true performance and progress of the project. Repeated freeze period changes have the potential for actual cost misallocation and mischarging, as well as misstating actual performance against the plan. The freeze period is depicted in this graphic as the orange section spanning the months of December and January. The months which comprise the freeze period are always depicted using the accounting calendar. The month beginning after the freeze period is called the planning period, signifying that normal, less restrictive baseline change control is in effect. Let's look at some of the changes which are allowed during the freeze period. The first primary allowance is for routine accounting changes. Because these are changes relating to the accounting and other related systems, such as accruals and timekeeping, changes under this category are limited to changing the ACWP, all changes to cumulative data, even if the corrections are for prior accounting periods, are made in the current period of the EVM data and reported in the current month ACWP column in the IPMR formats 1 and 2 and explained in format 5. In some circumstances, changes approved by the customer are made in the current period budgets. This may include negotiations of previously authorized effort that is definitized with a change in the contract value, but this also includes newly authorized work that must begin immediately. Undistributed budget, or UB, is budget set aside for authorized scope, which has not yet been distributed to control accounts. UB is considered a temporary holding account for scope and budget. As the baseline changes are authorized by the project manager, this scope and budget is transferred to the appropriate control account. These movements may take place within the freeze period. Like UB, Management Reserve, or MR, is a holding account for budget. However, unlike UB, the MR budget has no scope assigned to it. When additional scope is transferred to control accounts that is not associated with a change in the contract's budget or authorized scope, the source of that budget is MR. While it is preferred that a change control program identify scope and budget changes outside the freeze period, it is permissible to make freeze period changes if that work scope needs to begin in the freeze period. Errors that are discovered in earned value data need to be corrected promptly. If the error is in previously reported or current period data, these adjustments are reflected in the current periods of formats 1 and 2 and explained in format 5. There can be a broad range of reasons that qualify as errors, however, poor planning or significant variances do not qualify. During the execution of work scope, 
there may be safety or emergency situations which require immediate action, regardless of documented authorization or eventual source of budget. These emergent issues may begin immediately with coordination of the DOE. Associated change documentation should be initiated and implemented on an as-soon-as-possible basis. Often, adjustments to direct and indirect rates are made, which have impact to previous recorded and or current period actual costs. Adjustments resulting from changes to prior periods are recorded in the current period column of the formats 1 and 2, plus they are explained in format 5. Like the first bullet, rate adjustments only impact current period ACWP, freeze period and prior period budgets, like BCWS and BCWP, are never impacted by routine rate adjustments. Level of effort, or LOE, work packages earn their value, or BCWP, simply by the passage of time. Therefore, the reporting of BCWP may not necessarily mean that the work in the LOE work package has actually started. The only measure of whether an LOE work package has begun is the reporting of ACWP. In the cases where an LOE work package has cumulative BCWS and BCWP reported, but very little or zero reported ACWP, it is permissible to replan that work package in the freeze period. Questions often arise regarding the allowability to make changes to data in the periods preceding the current month. In other words, true retroactive changes. As mentioned before, any changes to the data in prior periods are recorded in the EVM reports as current period changes and discussed in Format 5. These changes are generally limited to correction of errors, including accruals, reversals, and time card adjustments. Any routine accounting adjustments to ACWP, including retroactive rate adjustments, DOE directed or approved changes, which may require an adjustment to previously reported BCWS, BCWP, or ACWP. These types of changes are rare, but occasionally, in order to accommodate the negotiation of authorized scope, it may be required to make a budget adjustment in prior months. In addition, if a DOE decision is made regarding the allowability of historical costs, the ACWP will be adjusted accordingly. Any changes required to improve baseline integrity and accuracy of the performance measurement data, these should be exceptionally rare and require prior DOE approval. And finally, a few words on the changes that are allowed to open work packages. If there is no scope adjustment or impact within the freeze period, the time phasing of the BCWS for an open work package may be changed within the overall budget and schedule parameters. This must be done by Element of Cost, or EOC. When new scope has been authorized which changes the current scope of an open work package, the preferred method is to close the work package by setting BCWS equal to BCWP. This method will erase any schedule variance, but retain the cost variance in the closed work package. A new work package is then established, comprised of the remaining scope and budget from the closed work package, plus the scope and budget of the newly authorized scope. The budget value used from the closed work package is calculated by subtracting the cumulative BCWP from the budget at completion, or BAC. This results in the budgeted cost of the work remaining, also referred to as BCWR. If closing the existing work package is not an option, the least preferred method is to revise the existing work package. This is often the case when work packages are linked to subcontractor purchase orders, and closing a work package is prohibitive in the accounting and purchasing systems. The additional scope added to the existing work package is budgeted using the currently applicable planning rates, both indirect and direct. Often, these changes result in a baseline change to the Integrated Master Schedule, or IMS, resulting in a baseline adjustment to baseline start and or finish dates, and milestones. And finally, all changes to existing work packages other than replanning the BCWS outside the freeze period, but within the BAC, must be justified in Format 5 of the IPMR. Thank you for using the Snippet Library. 
For additional information relative to EVMS procedures, templates, helpful references, and training materials, please refer to DOE PM's external EVM homepage or the internal max.gov PM library. Check back periodically for updated or new information.